Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be de continuing the discussion on Bach flower essences with Vervain. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists, so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. When trying to determine which Bach flower essence to use, it's necessary to understand the characteristics and symptoms of the essence from a psychological position. This is, be, this is because the Bach flower essences work on the subtle bodies of the human subtle anatomy field. For healing to take place, you need to look at the situation from this different level. So, what are the characteristics of vervain? The Bach flower essence of vervain is for people who burden others with their convictions and missionary zeal. Vervain is used as the basic treatment for people that want to cram their religious beliefs down the other people's throats. It's for intolerant idealism and for people who feel a need to improve the world with their rigid, fixed ideas on how things should be. Another hallmark for this Bach flower essence is people with inflexible beliefs and convictions, fanaticism and blindly zealous beliefs. This essence is used to treat all pathological conditions related to excessive zeal or missionary tendencies that are pushy or insistent. In daily life, it's used to treat pushiness, excessive enthusiasm, one-sidedness, preconceptions, lack of a sense of proportion, stress, nervousness, and tension. The Ravain syndrome is characterized by extroversion and of a humane sense of idealism. Goal-oriented thinking and strength of will are also symptoms of this syndrome. It is also found that there is a great need to dominate others. When positively developed, the Vervain type is an enthusiastic, can-do idealist who gladly places their talents and knowledge in the service of others. When positively developed, these people have a view for what those around them need and are always ready to help. Their selflessness is combined with an ambitious, active spirit and a strong will. And so, they can achieve remarkable results where the well-being of others is concerned. Because they wish for things to go well for those around them, it never occurs to them to impose their own opinions on others, or to try to convert them to their way of thinking, or to place them in a kind of mental yoke. They are inspired to put their personal sense of mission into action. They feel a special calling and feel that they are sent to share their riches with those in need and bring them what they need for body and soul, while taking care not to force upon them anything that will be harmful. When negatively developed, the vervain type's idealism can turn into intolerance. The readiness to help can change to a need to imprison their will on others, and their natural superiority can become dominance, which turns the vervain type into in an intolerant do-gooder or a fanatical missionary. These people are naturally oriented towards success and driven by a sense of mission, but they can lose their feeling for the uniqueness and worth of other people. When negatively developed, the vervain type cannot stop themselves from barging uninvited into the lives of others or imposing on them what they feel is best for them. They interfere exactly because they have the best of intentions, and many will rightly find them to be imposing, intolerant, or fanatical. Even when these people are not physically strong, they can still mobilize an unusually great amount of strength to carry out their obsession with an idea or a mission they feel is important. These people do have a wonderful capacity for dedication and concentration when it comes to reaching their goals. 
They are helpless against life's adversities and changeability, and they find it difficult to direct their energies to to toward determining whether their ideas and intentions are realizable and sensible. Above everything else, though, they can become especially captivated by lofty moral values when they lose the appropriate sense of proportion. They will pursue a goal that they have set for themselves like someone obsessed, or else they try to follow with missionary zeal what they have determined to be their right path in life. This attitude creates an imbalance. There is more in the world than what the vervain type thinks or feels is right. Reality has its own rules, and there are those who resist having someone else Form, someone else's form of happiness imposed upon them, and so all the energy they have gathered becomes directed at themselves, and they become rushed, tense, sleeplessness, or stressed, without noticing how fanatically pushy or intolerant they've become. Vervain is the Bach flower essence that is used to treat stress-related missionary overzealousness, it helps us respect the attitudes of others and allows us to let them live happily in their own manner. It broadens our horizons and brings about the realization that we do not have a monopoly on the truth. At the same time, it prevents zeal and enthusiasm from becoming ends in themselves and creating a source of stress. In appropriate cases, it works against nervous tension, insomnia, high blood pressure, or tension, and can help initiate a healing relaxation phase in the case of overwork and overextension, or stress on the sympathetic nervous system. The major problem with the vervain type revolves around their idealistic enthusiasm for helping. When this essentially wonderful trait grows out of control and becomes superficial, this becomes a problem. In this instance, our culture, which is predominantly devoid of meaning, is responsible for it does not allow us to be brought up to find ourselves and develop our own sense of the truth. Truth not in the moral sense, but in the sense of things as they truly are. Having failed in this regard, our society does not allow us to channel our energies in a meaningful manner. In any case, the Vervain type should become clear about the meaning of idealism and helping. Ideals are essentially the creations of a dissatisfied psyche. When life does not offer us what we expect or desire, we often try to replace it with a better, made-up substitute. Through a fantasy image in which we fill in only a one-sided version of what seems pleasant and good to us. All of the things we take to be negative or unhappy are left out. This fantasy is constructed out of both true and untrue elements. And if we take the end result for what it is, a theoretical model, it can enrich us psychologically, lend a little color to our life, and nourish the tendencies that lead us on our life's path. The mistake is made when we follow and accept this false image uncritically, since only a part of it resonates with reality. In the depths of our being, we become even more discontent and enter into an even greater conflict with our less-than-perfect life. While the ideals that we apply to ourselves do possess a certain amount of flexibility, and our psyche tries to adapt it to a certain degree to match reality, any ideal that we try to impro impose on others will lack this regulating element. Such ideals are largely theoretical because they arise predominantly from our reason and often make us seem hard and intolerant. This is especially true, and often with disastrous effects, in education or politics, where such ideals can become dogmas. While the vervain type acts with the best of intentions, their actions are harmful consequences, have our harmful consequences for the victims. 
those being the people they are trying to help. They are convinced that what is good for them is good for everyone else and judge the value and appropriateness of their actions in terms of whether they make them happy. On top of all of this, they end up hurting themselves because when they get carried away with their own strength and enthusiasm, they cannot read the numerous internal and external signals that their busy overworked body sends in the form of stress symptoms. It's important for these people to be cool and composed, to gain a little distance, especially from themselves, and concentrate on their more positive aspects, which would be their selfless, selfless enthusiasm and their pure motives. Once these people learn how to do this, they can then use their considerable powers of concentration and achieve sensible, sensible and sensibility and appropriateness. Common combinations with other, other um, Bach flower essences uh, with vervain are as follows. When vervain's combined with holly, it helps with irritable do-gooder syndrome. Combined with impatience, it helps with stress and agitation. Combined with oak, it helps with stress due to a compulsion for overworking. Combined with vine, it helps with in totally intolerant behavior. Combined with white chestnut, it helps with fixed ideas. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.